Hey there. Today I'm going to talk about something that a lot of people bring up, but never really at length. It concerns members of the girl group Luna, and while I'm calling it the Go Won't problem, make no mistake, this concerns multiple members, including Yoon Jin, Ha Sol, Yo Jin, and Vivi. You might be wondering why something that is most commonly characterized as a complaint online distributions gets a whole video, too actually, to itself. But to really understand why this issue is worthy of this much attention, you kind of have to understand what being in orbit means, especially if you've been here a while. The whole pre-debut project that made Luna as famous as it is was predicated on the idea that each member of the group was a capable enough idol to be worthy of a solo career in her own right. Hence each member being given a solo and introduced individually, coming together to form subunits and then a whole group. This allowed each girl not only to showcase her talents in their best light, but allowed each girl to become familiar to the internet and build up her own fan base, so that when they all came together, it created a dream team like joy at seeing artists that were pretty much already established working together to create even cooler things. To put it shortly, Luna very much lent itself to the idea that all 12 members were equally talented, and thus, would presumably be given equal treatment. The first signs that something was going wrong here were Yojin and Vivi. Yojin was the fourth Luna member introduced, back when they hadn't really exploded like they have now. While she was given a solo, she was not given a subunit to participate in, with Luna 1 debuting Vivi instead. This is easily explained, since being only 14 at the time, she was too young to legally perform on stage. It doesn't explain why her Luna TV arc stopped with photo shoots and never went into the actual music video, but I digress. Then there was Vivi, the fifth member, fans noticed that, while she was putting out music with her subunit, she got a lot less singing time than her peers did. This too, comes with a handy excuse, because Vivi was foreign. She is a Hong Kong native, and barely spoke any Korean when she joined the group, so pushing her to sing too much in a language she was not familiar with was not a wise idea. To compensate for this, rather than a solo and a b-side, she was given two versions of her solo song to sing with different compositions, and featuring a different Luna member on each. The first was third member Ha Sol, but the second featured Jin Sol, who had not yet debuted. Which brings us to Odd Eye Circle. While they typically don't receive too much of the Go Won't problem themselves, it's still worth dipping into. Jin Sol was not the sixth member to debut after Vivi, but the seventh. The sixth was Kim Lip, who became an internet sensation with Eclipse, essentially putting Luna on the map. Being added to NASA's 2017 playlist didn't hurt, either. Jin Sol followed up with an even greater success, fine-tuning the sultry R&B Kim Lip brought into a super cool, fast-paced future bass track. The new batch of Luna girls promised badassery and ferocity, and then came Cherry to round them out. Cherry debuted with Love Cherry Motion which unfortunately put a lot of people off. There was immediately a noted drop-off in interest, which I attribute to the hook of her solo taking some time to come in, it starts relatively bright and cheery, in the style of the preceding one-third subunit, before delivering two beat drops much more in line with the established Odd Eye Circle sound. Fans who were solidly here for the Kim Lip and Jin Soul feel did not take well to this, and this naturally came with festering ideas that Cherry was not as capable a singer as them, to the point that some people even insisted that they had been featured on the track as vocalists. This is untrue. Looking at Cherry's case here which was not helped by accusations of over-sexualization of a minor, which you can examine on your own, you can go back and spot a similar problem with members as early as Yoon Jin. Hee Jin was, up until Kim Lip, the most popular member by far and this was reflected in the traffic her solo received. The second member, Yoon Jin, who debuted directly after, did not get nearly the attention she did, and her solo remains the least watched among all 12, even four years later. When you look at Cherry, this starts to add up, member Hee Jin was introduced with a very strong vibe, a lot of energy, and an extremely catchy, jazzy song. Yoon Jin, who sang the soft, mournful ballad around you was doomed to exist in that shadow, as concept took precedence and became perceived as talent and worth as a vocalist. But I can complain about the relatively one-track mind of K-pop fans another time. We're going this far in so you can understand that what happened with Go Won was well established, and that at this point, Blockberry Creative really should have known better. Odd Eye Circle, even if there were some bumps in the road with Cherry, was still far and away more successful than One Third, if more so overseas than on home base. This created a great environment for the following subunit, YYXY, to flourish even faster. In came Eve, who was a skilled dancer, and then Chu, who was a surprise powerhouse vocalist and sudden icon for lesbianism. Just like Yoon Jin had to sit in Hee Jin's shadow and Cherry in the shadow of Kim Lip and Jin Soul, Go Won debuting directly after Chu was, not the best way to enter Luna. Make no mistake, Go Won is just as skilled and talented as Eve and Chu, but the tendency of both fans and agencies to prioritize booming, powerful voices like Chu's over relatively soft and high voices like Go Won's meant that she was immediately branded a lesser singer since she had the misfortune to debut after her. And this time, people were less patronizing about it than outright mean. 
not helping things were that a lot of energy was put into the music video, but relatively little into a challenging or iconic choreography, although she can at least say she's made a name, or meme, for herself as a rapper, more on that later. Blockberry again did further damage with the B-side track Seesaw, which gave way more attention to the guest singer Chu than Go Won, whose album it was hitting the market on. Fans noted, quite irately, that featuring artist Kim Lip was also barely present, despite being well established and quite popular. After Go Won came a month long break, after which Olivia Hay debuted as the final member of Luna. Being the last member in a lineup that had taken a year and a half to complete, Olivia was pretty much guaranteed to be a hit with Luna fans, even if she hadn't had a music video concept that was much more user friendly and promotable than Go Won's, along with challenging choreography and features by popular members Jin Sol and Hee Jin as rappers. So you can kind of see where this is headed, Chu has exploded onto the scene, Olivia Hay hit the deck running full speed, and Eve's own somewhat smaller fan base was rapidly picking up energy, leaving Go Won in the dust. Did this trend of mismanaging and slight chilling continue into the subunit era and the full group era? Well, yes. It wasn't as extreme in Beauty and The Beat, which ranged from giving Go Won almost nothing to letting her have a healthy spotlight, but there was also no YYXY repackage, in contrast to Wonther and Odd Eye Circle, meaning there was less chance for Go Won to show her stuff. Instead, Luna transitioned straight into debuting the full group, which is definitely where problems started showing themselves. The pre-debut song favorite, an iconic song in its own right, was set to declare the signature sound of Luna at its complete form, which is more or less true, for better, or for worse, and there is a worse. The division of singing time in the song was tilted very, very far towards one half and very far away from the other half, the other half being Yoonjin, Ha Sol, Yojin, Vivi, and Go Won. Yoonjin and Yojin did have intermittent lines, and Ha Sol, Yojin, and Go Won did all get significant killing parts, albeit short one-offs that seemed token compared to the other members' presences. Vivi was the one who got neither, to the point that for a long time, people thought she hadn't gotten any lines at all, hence why Vivi would become the face of this problem as time went on. All of these girls also made do with limited screen time, barely being present in comparison to Hee Jin, Kim Lip, or Eve. If anyone thought the official debut would improve things, they were wrong, because this issue became more skewed than ever. Yoon Jin, Vivi, and Ha Sol all but disappeared, and Yojin and Go Won slid by while snagging a decently sized part near the end. This trend continued throughout the album, fans of a steadily worsening mood noted how very muted these members were for no clear reason. All of them continued to be handed a sparse line or two in each song, just enough so that it couldn't be said that they didn't sing at all. Some people said that this was Blockberry trying to play to who the fan base preferred most. I disagree with this, while it does look like this on the surface level, the way this would mutate and stagnate later on leads me to believe it is solely bias. Sure, Kim Lip and Jin Sol were taking up a lot of lines, and so was Chu, while Cherry had slightly less but was still comfortable, while the less popular members got less lines. But Eve was getting a lot, despite her popularity not having really taken off yet. You could explain away Hee Jin's line time, as I once did, by saying that most people would've only been exposed to her since she's got the solo that starts the pre-debut project, and it would've been after watching her that most people stayed or left. But this really doesn't suffice to explain how massive the discrepancy really is. At Lunaverse, the second Luna concert to promote the repackage, Luna 1 3rd and Luna YYXY covered each other's subunit songs, minus Eve, who had an injury. Despite both units being composed of four members and even having fairly similar vocal tones, Vivi was required to split Go Won's lines with Yoon Jin, cutting down another of those rare moments where she otherwise would've gotten to show off a lot. We move on to Butterfly. Luna was reaping the rewards of their pre-debut project for half a year after the official debut, and only once promotions ended did the XX teaser drop. New Year of 2019, we received the X1X teaser. It is important to note exactly what these teasers were saying to their audience. The third subunit is called YYXY, with its third member Go Won being the X among the group. The X1X teaser had an incredibly heavy focus on the word butterfly, which is Go Won's thematic animal. X2X followed up, seemingly confirming that Go Won would be in heavy prominence in the first comeback. This was a delight for the fan base, since the hiatus had lasted much longer than was typical for Luna content at the time, and fans had gotten quite familiar with the knowledge that Go Won was a very underrated, underappreciated, and underrepresented member. The focus on her image animal continues with teasers X3X and X4X, which featured the other members of her subunit. The final product simply did not reflect this at all. The issue here is not only that the title track and its sister tracks promised Go Won prominence and did not deliver, the sound and feel of the album, especially Butterfly, is pretty much tailor-made to suit her while ignoring her. Each solo among the pre-debut project was designed to have a tone and vibe that best suited the member singing it, a trend continued among the subunits. 
The tone and vibe of one and only is extraordinarily like that of butterfly, having a lot of the same construction elements and being possessed of the same ethereal, haunting quality. The presentation of Butterfly is all about high singing tones and falsettos, which Go Won absolutely excels at as she has the highest voice register of the group and could easily nail the more demanding notes. Of all the times to backpedal on giving Go Won overdue lines and center time, this was the most disastrous time, because it is highly unlikely that they are ever going to release a track that suits her as well as this one did. This was the one ball they shouldn't have dropped, only for them to fall right back on Heejin and Eve. Go Won doesn't even sing the title line Butterfly once. Many people fondly remember the XX era as fixing a lot of the screen time and singing time issues of Plus Plus. I disagree, and the ultimate rundown tends to support my take on things. If you look at the way lines are divvied up among this album's tracks, not much actually changes, barring a few bones being thrown to members like Hustle and Vivi, who get to have a lot of lines on one song or two each, the way the final ranking stacks up is almost completely unchanged, simply being far less extreme than it was before. So while we do have a massive improvement from the distressingly unfair scenario presented in Plus Plus, it's not exactly as though Blockberry Creative were straining too hard to give fans what they were actually hoping to see. I feel as though I was the only one not shocked by what happened in Hash, perhaps because I was so alone in being rather dissatisfied by XX. If fans were displeased by Plus Plus, Hash was not going to give them any mercy, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Hash came almost an entire year after XX, and 2019 had been a very disastrous year for Luna. Butterfly was the last song Jaden Zhang wrote for the group, and he left almost immediately after its release. By now, Orbits understand that Jaden Zhang was the creative producer for the Luna project, and also possibly the devil himself. As 2019 wore on, presenting sabotage after sabotage and inexplicable million-dollar lawsuit debts, Orbits were simply desperate to see Luna again and know that they could shake this off. And then 365 was dropped in December. Like favorite before it, it was a lead single designed to tease an upcoming album. While a very heartwarming song addressed directly to Orbits to express the love and gratitude Luna had for their support throughout a very hard year, fans were able to, quite uncomfortably, identify yet more disparity in the way lines were divided, being somewhat less equal than Butterfly, but not as hilariously unfair as Hi Hi, this put 365 firmly on the bad end of line distributions. Even though this was a ballad track, members who before had been propped up as ballad singers were still being highly overshadowed by the same few members. Yoonjin, Hasol, Yojin, Vivi, and Go Won were in the exact same source spot as always. 365 is unfortunately one of the more evenly distributed tracks on the Hash album. Many orbits are understandably shocked at just what happened with Hash, and are forcefully reminded of the Plus Plus album. And I would, again, like to correct them. This is not a revisitation of an old album's problem, it is a worsening of a recent one's issue. So let me give you the rundown. Hash, featuring title track So What?, is a continuation of the theme of female empowerment Luna has espoused since XX and Butterfly. Rather than the dreamy, floating tone of realizing one's full potential, so what is an aggressive, badass track designed to make one feel the heat of actually fighting to reach that potential, despite all obstacles. Just like with Butterfly, Go Won featured prominently in a teaser reserved pretty much to herself among extras. So, no one knows what is on the back of the moon. Hustle was announced to be on a hiatus due to anxiety just before this comeback dropped, so she was not going to be involved in any singing discussions among the fandom. Yoon Jin, I am happy to report, blossomed and began receiving a lot of well-deserved focus, if not enough to overpower anyone else. Yoo Jin still remains one of the least focused on singers, but she still scraped by. The remaining issue, now, are Vivi and Go Won. Vivi sang three times. Go Won sang four. All of these lines were extremely short and token. Meanwhile, Kim Lip, Eve, Chu, and Hee Jin sang six, seven, or even eight lines apiece, almost all of which are long lines designed to give these members a lot of focus. Hee Jin is the biggest problem. She seems to sing the first half of the song almost unassisted, and gets part of the rap, when up until now she wouldn't have really been considered a rapper, despite taking some shots at it. I should not need to state that it is extremely hypocritical for a song to be about women breaking past barriers and letting no one hold them back, 
only for two members in particular to be held very, very far back so someone else can shine. At 20 seconds versus less than three, members like Heejin and Chu are literally singing eight times as much as Vivi and Go Won. This is simply not acceptable in any group, never mind one that went so far out of its way to present its members as all being extremely talented independent of what group they could be in. It is certainly not acceptable when a company also went out of its way to advertise members it inexplicably chose to all but ignore. Vivi had been living in the country for four years when so what was released. It is simply not possible her proficiency was lacking to such a degree as to warrant this. Luna had at this point tried out quite a few concepts, so it's ridiculous to imply that some members simply suit certain songs more than others when the pattern remains unchanged the entire way through. Now, we come to 12 o'clock, led by title track Why Not, and again continuing the female empowerment theme. And this problem is still presenting itself, again with the same few members, and most particularly Go Won. While not heralded by a dramatic set of teasers, 12 o'clock is nonetheless still an exercise in throwing bones and not making any commitment to changing. While Kim Lip, Eve, and Chu aren't holding onto half the song themselves anymore, and VV has some chorus lines that are so unchallenging as to be suspect, Hee Jin and Go Won are still singing the same way they've always been singing. While the fat has been trimmed off the meat, there's still a big giant bone running through it, and that bone looks like one member singing for 30 seconds and another one for less than 5. In fact, if you look at things on a member by member basis, things haven't changed at all. Hee Jin still sings almost the entire first half of the song plus a rap, and Go Won only opens her mouth twice, which is actually worse than before. And yes, this is a trend that continues through the album. If 12 o'clock did any one good thing for the fan base, it was changing the title of this video from the VV problem to the Go Won problem. The familiar drum beat of angry VV fans meant that Blockberry probably knew they would get skinned alive if they relegated her again, but this did not sway them into changing a damn thing for anyone else. Orbits, at least, after months upon months of making VV the face of this problem and often forgetting anyone else, are realizing that the problem goes deeper. There are simply no excuses left. With how this group was built up, there never should have been reason to make excuses in the first place. BBC's biases have long since bled out into fandom and erased the bumpy but otherwise diverse attentions Luna were getting pre-debut, and the bias listings are skewing more and more to match the frustrating situation we've been in for a while. As for me, I know better than to get my hopes up. But it sure would mean a lot to me if Orbits as a whole could be as angry about this as I am. Yoonjin and Hasol deserve better. Yojin deserves better. Vivi deserves better. Go Won, in particular, deserves better than this, and I will not stop saying this until it's fixed.